Hey everyone, it's Mr. N again, and we are going to do the AP Calc Chapter 7, 1 to 7, 4 out of Stewart review. Uh, I didn't title this AP Calc, but there you go. And so let's go ahead and take a look at this. The first one is a basic problem, and it says use the properties of logarithms to expand the quantity log base 3 of x to the fourth y squared over z cubed. So what we are going to do is use our basic logarithm properties. So we will take this and we will rewrite this as log base 3. And again, these right here will get multiplied. Since they're multiplied, we can, we can expand them out with addition. And the division, we expand it out with subtraction. So this becomes log base 3 of x to the fourth. Here's the addition part, log base 3 again of y squared and now the subtraction part for that bottom, and log base 3 of z cubed. Okay, now this 4 can come out in front, this 2 can come out in front, so we end up with 4 log base 3 of x plus 2 log base 3 of y minus, and then this 3 can also come out in front to give me log base 3 of z. And we will leave it at this point like this. For number two, it says find the inverse function. So to find the inverse, we switch the x and y. So we're going to say x equals 4 plus e to the y over 7 minus e to the y. So we take this and now we got to somehow solve this. What we could do is we can cross multiply. And when we cross multiply, we end up with 7. Oops, let's... 7x minus x e to the y equals 4 plus e to the y. Now we can combine the e to the y's on the same side and the other values. So we can end up with 7x minus 4 equals e to the y plus x e to the y. And then at this point we can take out that e to the y. So we have 7x minus 4 equals e to the y, and then we end up with 1 plus x, and we could divide that over. So 7x minus 4 over 1 plus x is my e to the y. Well, I got one more step to do, and that's to solve for the <coughs> y value, so we could take the natural log of each side, so we end up with ln 7x minus 4 over the 1 plus x equals our y. So we took the natural log here of each side, and that ln and e became 1. So this was our final answer. And you can express this, if you would like, as the inverse of x. Okay, let's do these derivations. This first one, we have to derive y equals ln x to the fifth cosine squared x. Okay, so one thing I want to have you remember is that sheet that we passed out in class that has all our formulas on it. So we need to make sure we um, go ahead and use that, keep that handy, and memorize that for the AP test. Now, uh, you can go ahead and uh, I'm going to be posting that sheet up on the website in case you want to print out another copy, so you can always visit my website there. All right, so let's take a look here. For this one, we're going to take the derivative. We've got y prime, and the derivative of the natural log is 1 over this stuff. So x to the fifth times cosine squared x. But now I need to employ the chain rule. So the chain rule, well, I've got things going on here. I've got this first, x to the fifth, and I've got this cosine x squared. So that's a product rule inside that chain rule. So first times the derivative of the second. Well, the derivative of this is going to be 2 cosine x to the first power times the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x sure we could see that that's a negative right there. Okay, plus the second, which now is the cosine squared x, times the derivative of the first, which is 5x to the fourth. It's a lot to squeeze in there. All right, let's see what we can clean up with this. So let's go ahead and rewrite this as y prime equals, now the top, they have a cosine in common, so let's take that out. And they also have an x to the fourth in common. So we're going to take out an x to the fourth and a cosine x. 
And we're going to be left with this x times the 2 times the negative sine x plus a 5 and another cosine x. That's what we'll have on top. On the bottom, we are going to end up with just this x to the fifth cosine squared x. Now what you'll notice is that reduces with four of those and the cosine with one of those. So we end up with y prime equaling, now let's just rewrite this so that it's a little bit better. We're going to have negative 2 because of this negative. Let me point that out, that negative right there. Okay, so negative 2 x sine x plus your 5 cosine x all over x cosine x. And that is the derivative there. Let's slide this up a little bit. Okay, this second one, let's draw a line here so we could separate these out. For this second one, okay, we've got y equals ln x over 2 plus x. Okay, so what we need to do here is we need to use the quotient rule. So we've got y prime equaling the bottom, which is 2 plus x, times the derivative of the top, the derivative of ln x is 1 over x, minus the top, which is ln x, times the derivative of the bottom, which in this case would just be 1, all over this 2 plus x squared. So cleaning this up, y prime will end up just being 1 over x, 2 plus x, minus ln x, over 2 plus x. Now, we could clean this up much further. You could um, break this apart with common denominators and just say 1 over x plus, we could say like 1 over x times the 2 plus x over the 2 plus x squared minus the ln x over the 2 plus x squared. And what you'll notice is one of these will go with one of those, and the x will be brought down, 1 over x times the quantity 2 plus x minus ln x over 2 plus x squared. Now, don't worry about that unless it's on a multiple choice part where you're trying to uh, match up that answer. As far as free response, at this point right here, I'm okay with it, so just leave it like that because a lot of reducing on the AP test is unnecessary. Um, sometimes they will ask you, but usually they're okay if, at that point if you just stop right there. All right, let's take a look at this next one. On this next one, we've got f of x equals 8 to the power of 4x to the fifth. So for this, we have to use our power formula that we learned, and in this case, f prime of x will just be this. Remember, f prime will just be a to the x ln a. So that's the situation we have here. So this is 8 to the 4x fifth times ln 8. But now I have to do the chain rule and take the der derivative of that part also. So that's 20x to the fourth. So we end up with just cleaning this up just a little bit, rewriting it. We're just going to say 20x to the fourth times ln 8 times 8 to the 4x to the 5th power. You could just leave it like that at this point. Okay, taking the derivative of the next one. This is e to the 3x to the 7th minus 4x squared. So on this one, remember the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, but then we have to use the chain rule. So um, let's draw our little border here. So right here, we end up with f prime of x being e to to the 3x to the 7th minus the 4x squared. Now I have to multiply this by the chain rule, so 21x to the 6th minus 8x. So this ends up being, just rewriting this, 21x to the 6th minus 8x times e, in fact I don't really need that parentheses there, so it'll be times 
you could put this one in the parentheses, e to the 3x to the 7th minus 4x squared. We could just go like that and leave it at that point. All right, let's get to the integration. So most of these right now, we're going to go ahead and integrate using a substitution rule. On Remember, when we talked about this in class, you could use a guess and check technique. But for this video, I'm just going to go ahead and use substitution rule on uh, pretty much all of these. So let's take a look at this first one. On this first one, we've got the integral of the tangent x. So we know the integral of the tangent from our formula sheet, and we memorize it, is the natural log of the secant squared. So we're going to let u equal this 2x minus 3. So du equals 2 dx, which means du over 2 is our dx. So we're going to rewrite this as the integral of tangent u, and this will be du over 2. So we could put the 1 half out in front, integral of tangent u du, and that will be 1 half times the natural log of the absolute value of the secant u plus c. So resubstitute, we have the secant and it'll be u, which is 2x minus 3 plus rc. Okay, the next one. For the next one, we've got... the integral of 3x squared over x cubed minus 4. So let's go ahead and start with our substitution, and we're going to let u equal, in this case, let's choose the harder looking part of this, which is the x cubed minus 4. So du equals 3x squared dx, so that means du over 3x squared is our dx value. So we end up with the integral, 3x squared over x cubed minus 4 times du over 3x squared. Oops, let's go ahead and put, we should have put our u in right here. Sorry about that. So that's where our u should go. So we've got the integral of 3x squared over u times du over 3x squared. Well, those reduce out, and I'm just left with the integral of du over u, which is just ln absolute value of u plus c. Now, this is one where you could have done it with, easily with the guess and check way, since you know that you want the denominator to be x cubed minus 4. You could just go ahead and guess x cubed minus 4 and take the derivative of that and see that, oh, it kind of matches up to what we had originally and go from there. So for this one, let's just finish this off by resubstituting. So this ends up being x cubed minus 4 plus c. Okay, for number 9, we're going to go ahead and let u equal the ln x. So u equals our ln x. That means du will be 1 over x dx. So x du is my dx. Let's make our substitutions. 3 sine u over x, and now our du, our dx is x du, so you'll see that those nicely reduce out. So we end up with 3 times the integral of sine u du, and this ends up being negative cosine u, so we'll say negative 3 cosine u plus c. And we resubstitute this in, our ln x plus c. Okay, again, you could try guessing and checking on that by saying, okay, I look at this, I need a sign there. What will happen? Okay, let's try it with a cosine. When I take that derivative, I'll get the sign, I'll get one over, and then you'll need the negative out in front. So it can be done with a guess and check method if you feel comfortable with that. Otherwise, just stick to substitution. All right, number 10 over here. We've got cosine x the integral of that over 2 minus x. So we're going to let u equal this 2 minus sine x. Again, we choose the one that looks a little bit more compl complicated. So du will just be negative, and the derivative of sine x will be cosine x dx. 
So du over negative cosine x is my dx. So now we end up with the integral of cosine x over u with our substitution, and the dx is du over negative cosine x. Look at that. Conveniently, those go away. Negative 1 on the outside, so we just have our negative integral of du over u, which ends up being negative ln absolute value of u plus rc. Resubstitute negative ln absolute value of 2 minus sine x plus rc. Okay, next problem. The integral of 4 to the 3x. Well, if you did this with a substitution, you'd probably say let let uh, a let u equal to 3x, right? But in this case, this is straight up our formula for the integral of a to the x. We could just straight up use that and we'll be fine. So a to the x dx is what we're looking at. That integral is just a to the x over ln a. And in this case, I've got 4 to the 3x over all right, ln a, so that would be ln 4, but don't forget, we if you took the derivative of this, you have an extra 3, so we need a 1 third out in front of it, so we're going to put that out there and work with that in that manner. Again, if you did the substitution rule, that 3 would come in and you'd bring it to the other side, so you'd have 1 third um, du equals dx, and it'll come into play. And you can always, if you do it this route, you can always check the answer to see if it works. Let's take the derivative with respect to x of 4 to the 3x. And if this was our initial guess, we would end up with 4 to the 3x ln 4 times 3 because we've taken derivative of that. Well, again, here's that 3, and I want to get rid of it, so that's why over here we divided it out. All right, moving on to this last one on this page for number 12. Number 12 says, oh, this time I have a definite integral from 1 to e of the square root of ln x over x. So let's go ahead and let u equal ln x. du is 1 over x dx, so that means x du is our dx. Let's make our substitutions. We end up with the integral of 1 to e, and this is the square root of u over x, but then we have, we substitute that dx, will be x du, so those conveniently reduce out. So we've got the integral of 1 to, 1 to e of the square to u du. Okay, at this point you can go ahead and integrate this, and you will get 2 thirds u to the 3 halves on the bounds. Now, at this point you've got two routes. You can either use a substitution technique, which we talked about, and I can find what u of e would be and what u of 1 would be. u of e ends up being ln e, which is 1. u of 1 is the ln natural log of 1, which is 0. So that means the e will be bounded here, 1, and the 0, or the 1, ends up being 0. So I don't have to resubstitute at this point. I could just stop right there and plug since I did the substitution here as well. So this ends up giving me uh, 2 thirds minus uh, 0, which is just 2 thirds. Now, if you resubstituted 2 thirds and then you resubstituted the ln x to the 3 halves, well, then you use your original bounds, and you'll end up with the same result. Because ln of e is just 1, so there's your 2 thirds, and ln 1 is 0, so there you go. 2 thirds minus 0 comes back to be 2 thirds. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next page. And on this page, the first problem is we have to find the inverse derivative of that function. Okay, so the components of the inverse derivative. Our formula for the inverse derivative is f inverse derivative of x is 1 over the derivative times the inverse of x. So we need several components here, actually a couple. We need f prime of x. Well, that just comes out to be 1 half 
and we're going to take the derivative of this thing right in there. So this ends up being 1 half 2x cubed plus x squared minus x plus 2. And close this parentheses out to the negative 1 half power. So we have to continue on with a chain rule, and here we'll end up with times this stuff that's on the inside. So this will be 6x squared plus 2x minus 1. All right, so now we need the inverse at a equals 2. So since we are finding the inverse at a equals 2, what I can do is I can flip-flop this. So I need an inverse. So our formula, we need a derivative and the inverse. So let's define the inverse. In this case, we'll have x equaling our square root of 2y cubed plus y squared minus y plus 2. All right, let's go ahead and square both sides to get rid of the square root. So before we do that, let's substitute our value. You could have substituted in after, but I'm just going to go ahead and substitute it in right now. So 2 equals this stuff. So now we're going to square both sides. So 4 equals, this will be 2y cubed plus y squared minus y plus 2. So 0 equals 2y cubed plus y squared minus y. I'm subtracting 4 from each side minus 2. All right, at this point, we are not using a calculator on this test. This is a non-calculator test, so how do I solve this? Well, you got to look at it, and these will always come out. Since it's a non-calculator test, these will have to come out somehow. You'll have to be able to factor it. You'll have to be able to find the answer easily. It won't be a decimal. You could have multiple roots, but I'm just going to have you find the whole number one. And in this case, look at this. What whole number can you choose that will make this happen? Well, if I pick one, let's start with the easiest one. Zero would be the easiest one. That doesn't work. Let's start with one. If I pick one... This is 2, plus 1 is 3, minus 1 is back to 2, minus 2 is 0. Oh, it works. Look at that. What do you know? y equals 1. Okay, so that means the inverse at 2 is 1. So here's what we're going to do with that. Since the inverse at 2 is 1, I need f prime of 1, because that's what I want in here, the inverse. I found it. This is 1 over, let's do a different color, this is 1 over f prime, and I found that inverse at the value 2. I found the inverse at, at 2, and that gave me 1. So that's why I need f prime of 1. So f prime of 1 is just going to be, we put in 1, you'll get 1 half. Let's go back to purple. 1 half times 4 to the negative 1 half times, let's plug it in here. In the second part, we get 7. And this ends up being 1 fourth times 7 which is 7 fourths. So, finishing all of this, I've got this part right here. This ends up being 1 over, so f prime of 1, that's what I'm doing right there, which is 1 over 1, oops, 1 over 7 fourths. 1 over 7 fourths, which comes out to be 4 sevenths as our final answer. All right, moving on to number 12, we need the, if h of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 1, we need the inverse at 9. All right, so what we have here is, again, finding an inverse, so we're going to switch the x and y, and in this case, we will have x equals y squared plus 2y plus 1. Okay, that's the method we're going to choose. So, hmm, how do I do this? Well, let's see if we, it's easier if I plug in the 9 at this point. So if I plug in the 9, I'll get 9 equals y squared plus 2y plus 1. Why did I plug in the 9? Because that's my x value right there. Okay, well, on this side, what you'll notice is it will factor. So this becomes y plus 1 squared. So now I could take the square root of each side. So I get plus or minus the square root of 9, which is 3, equals y plus 1. So y equals... 2 or negative 1. So we subtract it over, we get 2. Uh, so we got 2 and negative 1. All right, well, we got to be careful. We can't just assume it's going to be both values. Let's check. If we put in h of 2, we get 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 1, and that equals 9. Okay, we're set. If I put in h of negative 1, I get 
negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 1, which is not 9. So this is extraneous. So our only solution on this one is 2. Okay, moving on to number 13. On number 13, we've got f of x equaling x over ln x. We need to find the derivative at uh, e to the third power. Okay, so let's go through and take our derivative. f prime of x is going to be... All right, it's a quotient rule, so we're going to say the bottom, ln x, times the derivative of the top, which is 1, minus the top, which is x, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 1 over x. Well, that becomes 1 over the bottom squared. Okay, so this ends up being ln x minus 1 over ln x quantity squared. Well, I need f prime of e cubed, so let's put in e cubed. So we have ln of e cubed minus 1 over ln e cubed squared. In this case, this ends up being 3 ln e minus 1. That reduces out over 3 ln e cubed. So this reduces out. Actually, this should be, sorry, this should be 3 ln, ln e squared. Okay, that was a squared. So we end up with 2 over 3 squared is 9. All right, moving on to number 14, our last problem here. Here we go, the tangent line problem. All right, so let's go ahead and since we want a tangent line to the curve, we've got to follow the same steps. We've got to find the slope. The slope is our derivative. So m equals y prime. And in this case, it will be 1 over e to the x minus x cubed. Chain rule it, e to the x minus 3x squared. Now, I need this at x equals 0, so I'm going to go ahead and put in 0. So 1 over e to the 0 minus 0 cubed times e to the 0 minus 0 squared times 3, so that's just 0. So I end up with e to the 0 over e to the 0, which is 1. So there's my slope. So y minus y1 equals 1 x minus x1. Well, I have my x point. My x point is 0. So y minus y1 equals x minus 0. All right, at this point, I need to find what my second coordinate is, or actually the y value of my coordinate. So that means I have to use my original, y equals ln e to the x minus x cubed, and I need x equals 0. So let's plug this in, y equals ln e to the 0 minus 0 cubed. So you end up with ln of e to the 0 is 1. So be careful. You have to do this part first. You can't say ln of e. You have to do this. e to the 0 power is 1. So we have the ln of 1, which is 0. So it goes through the point 0, 0. That's my other y value. So y minus 0, and then I have the x. So y equals x is the equation of the tangent line at x equals 0. Hopefully this review helped. Uh, good luck studying for your test. Work hard. Study those formulas. It's really important to get those formulas down because you won't have them on the test. All right. Take care.